This is an Extra Special, Episode 36, 2014, New Year's Eve, on December 30th, 2014. And did you know it was, um, kinda awful? This Nexus Special is hosted by Andrew Bailey, Stephen Orvis, Matthew Petchel, and your host, Ryan Rampersett. Hey, how's it going? Uh, pretty good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty well. I haven't heard you in a while. Ah, I've been gone for quite a while, and where, so have where, you. Where have you been gone? Oh, uh, well, you know, around the neighborhood. And farther away. And further away. Yeah, me too. I've been on the campus, like, literally since October. I already had too many midterms and not as many finals. Uh, I had, uh, like, 60 midterms and, like, four oh, finals. Guys, what's going on? Um, it's the end of the year. Yeah, it's... Hey, that's... nice party, guys! No, I don't know if this is a party. I, I think it is a huge party. Wait, 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 wait. Are you guys doing a podcast, man? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, when we use uh, Microsofts to do it. Mm-hmm. You, you know about that. You haven't done that with Microsofts in, like, ever. Yeah. yeah. Like, since October. Yeah, since, like, ever, man. It's, it's very true. Do you hear those crickets? I hear crickets. Yeah, those crickets. Yeah, you know we should do more shows. Uh, we should we should do one right now. Yeah. Well, what what is this show about? Do you know? I, I don't know, but I think there's quite a few people here now. Well, yeah. So we have not only the Matt who has been gone for literally months. We also not have. Only do we have the Ryan Rampersad. Well, I've never been gone. I've always been here. Uh, we also have the Andrew Bailey and the Steve Orvis. Hi. It's just like their show. It's it's almost identical. <laughs> Yeah, and so we're doing the uh, New Year's special this uh, time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and yet, once again, not a single representative from the Innuendo show. Now, do you know how that happened? Do you, do you know the story? I think it had to do with vehicle problems. Yeah, there was some kind of uh, missing... Well, component. actually, I think it had to do with something like Europe or something. Well, that that is somewhat true. I suppose Sweden is near Europe. And you can't drive a vehicle from Europe to here. Despite, so it's a vehicle problem. Despite, Vehicles have limitations that can't be beat. Despite what Google Maps might say. Yeah, like vehicles have certain water problems. So, vehicle problems. Mm-hmm. Yes, that is, that is accurate. So what do, you, what do you want to talk about here on this New Year's show? Because, you know, we have to cover all the things that, that happened in the last year, which I heard was a lot of stuff. Do you know if that was true? Oh, it's very true. Yeah, so you, do you like know? so much stuff, I've forgotten most of it. Yeah, me too. Uh, you know, actually, uh, last year, last January or February, I had had this genius idea, which was to write down the important things that happened. Well, important things stopped happening, and then I stopped writing it down. Well, that's too bad. And then you stopped podcatting. Yeah, so it was kind of a cascade of, um, you know, just like none of this matter. fail. Well, um, yeah, that maybe. Mm-hmm. But I'm here again, and, so... And and midterms. Once those midterms start, they don't end. So I suppose we could go over some of our uh, favorite events and conferences. What, what do you think about that? I think that's a great plan. And what starts every year? What is it? CES. Did that even happen? Is that, isn't that about to happen in like yeah, five days? In, in, in five week, days from now? In a week, it'll happen again. But this is not that. This is last year. Last year. Or this year, depending on how you think about it. So do you know? Do you even remember what the topic for CAS was this year? Was it the year of the TVs? No, that was two years ago. I stopped following. Exactly. I have no idea what it, CES was. It the year of the 4K OLEDs? Uh, no, that was last year. Ah. Uh, I think everyone had all the vendors had their own events. Yeah, I mean, none of the big people had their own thing. It was all just yeah, pretty little much. tiny shop. It was very unless the, I forgot something amazing. It was so unimportant that nobody really cared much. That was so easy to cover. I, wasn't it? I mean, CES is such a uh, a joke show now, you yes. know, sad kind of way. Lol. Well, after yeah. thoroughly covering that, let's talk about Google I.O. There, there actually more happened there. Yeah. How much of it do you remember? Uh, I remember a lot more. You know, they showed the... Uh... Oh, wait, they didn't show the Nexus 6 at all. Oh, crap. Some, some... Well, what what time must, was it? They must have showed the uh, new Nexus 7. No, no, they didn't no, show that no, either. I think it was watches. Um, oh, right, they showed the the watch. Oh, but did they release any? No, 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 those were good. Um... Android 5, but that didn't release there either. Well, for the first time ever, they actually did do um, some kind of operating system beta preview kind of thing. It was awful, but they did it. So, uh, I think we pretty much covered that. That, that yeah. was awful. I mean... Got a theme going yet for 2000? I, I, okay, so 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 then let's talk about E3. Some, something about E3. I mean, 
E3 is about games, right? Yeah, you guys love games. What do you know about E3? Yeah, well, I... Uh, well, I think that uh, actually Nintendo put on a pretty good show. Nintendo and... was at the conference? Well, it sort of was. It did, like, its own sort of, like, virtual webcast conference. Oh, so... Like, didn't even thing. send anybody? Do what? What? <laughs> yeah, why? Why would you send someone to E3? Hmm. Uh, for all I know that they did actually have a booth there, uh, but, uh, you know, they seem to be, you know, always doing their own different thing, uh, whereas uh, Microsoft and Sony just kept on trying to one-up each other, and uh, pretty much all the big uh, uh, game publishers are publishing the same kinds of games. Yep. So, yeah, nothing really changed. You know, this would have been the first full year that the Xbox One and PS4 had been out, and I don't know how long the Wii U has been out, but don't you have one of those kind of things now? Uh, no. Wii U? No? My, my brother does, yeah. and um, it is it a lot fun. of fun. Yeah. Uh, that new Smash Brothers game is uh, everything you've ever wanted it to be. I really doubt it. But it is amazing. I, I really doubt it's everything I wanted. It's everything you've ever wanted in one game. But are there more than two buttons? Yes. Then I don't want it. Yes. No, this is this is the greatest game ever, and you'll love it. Well, so, so you want less buttons on your controllers? Yeah, I don't like buttons. Buttons are too hard. And plus, you get whole game pads instead of just motion sticks. That might be a benefit, but I doubt it. And you don't even have to look at your tiny TV across the screen. You got your whole everything on. I think that means your TV's wrong. Look, just because I don't have billions of dollars to spend on TVs. Yes, like you, you do, do. Mister. I want to buy a Canon for six hundred dollars. Um, well, Canon. It, it, it's, okay. <laughs> As as long as we're we're talking about this, all right. So here, here, click click the link. Um, they won't just sell me the thing. I have to get the artillery release form from this thing. But there's this company down in Tennessee. Um, it's it it's a half model of this um, British cannon, and I'm like, you know what? It'll be fun to shoot golf balls at my neighbors, and I was just gonna put a little bit of powder down there. But uh, you know, what? I want a cannon. Guns are only so cool. Yes. <laughs> But that's all I know. What were you? Well, uh, <laughs> after E3, there was WWDC. You know oh, that. Oh, that, what, what happened at that? That that Apple event. Do you know? Do you know anything about that? I literally have no idea what happened at WWDC. What did they even show? It was. Uh, wasn't it something like the new iOS, the new iPhone, the new iPad, the new everything? No, no, no hardware came out at WWDC actually this year, like most years, unfortunately. Um, I think last year they actually showed. No, I have no idea. Uh, yeah, I think it was just mostly new, new. Um, iOS kind of stuff, but what they did show was... Yeah, you saw nothing. I saw uh, nothing. They showed their new programming language called Swift. I haven't personally looked at it much, but you know, it's supposed to be all the rage, apparently. It's supposed to be the new Objective-C whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be kind of their simpler, newer, more developer-friendly language for it. So that's... Yeah, just like every other developer-friendly language. Exactly. but That more... replaced the other developer-friendly language. I mean, at least it's not Objective-C. Have you ever seen Objective-C? It's... Yeah, it looks pretty mangled. It's like going blind. Mm -hmm. It really is. Okay, well, what about uh, after that? What about Build? Uh, well, Build was mildly notable in that, you know that .NET framework and stuff that Microsoft has? Yes. They did something completely crazy, and they open-sourced it. Well, that's pretty impressive for Microsoft. So, yeah, so like their common language runtime thingy and ASP.NET, like all of that, open source. So, so the crazy part about that was how they put it all up on GitHub and yeah. got that rid of CFS. Too. That was the crazy part. That too. So yeah, uh, look for .NET coming to a Linux near you. And and I, I don't know for sure, but isn't this like the year that Sonia Dell was officially adopted into the CEO position? Then it happened in like January. I feel like that uh, happened pretty some... pretty recently. Uh, no, I think that was actually last year. No. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's like his like first full year or something. I think. Mm -hmm. What's changed? Nothing. Uh, well, apparently they're open sourcing everything. Okay, and, that, that is a good and, start. <laughs> and they also brought like uh, Office to iPad and Android. Yeah, but everybody had been saying they were going to do that for a long time. I think it just took them a while to make it nice. Well, it still happened this year, so it's. I guess we can talk about it. You, you know, it the happened. .NET, the .NET wasn't the only thing that they made open source. They opened up the code for the old Windows One as well. Uh, yeah, and like also the old Word, uh, yes. like one of the old versions of Word. But I don't think it was specifically at build. So, but hey. 
And of course, we have the actual Apple events where they, uh, you know, made big iPhones for the first yeah, time ever. Yeah, like big iPhones. I think it's 4.7 and 5.5 inches, right? Maybe? And not just big as in they'll sell a billion of them. Which they will, but they are physically larger than any iPhone previously, even after Steve Jobs famously said that nobody wanted a big phone. Well, seems like Samsung proved him wrong. Yeah, definitely. And and their own decreasing ability to woo customers also proved them wrong, too. And I have no idea what changed in the new iPads, but uh, apparently those are shiny. And isn't Matt the only one around here with an iPad? Uh, I am, actually. Isn't that the truth? It's great. We were going to bring uh, Brian Mitchell on, but he couldn't attend today. He has a, uh, a, an iPad. I'm not sure if it's the newest one, but he has one that's jailbroken, which is kind of cool. My sister has the newest one. Oh, how is that? Uh, locked down. Yeah, you, so you mean useless. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I know how the iPad syndrome works. It's not, not, the good, not the good kind. No, it's not. Well, so that's, that's enough for those events. Um, how, about, well, how about hardware? Has any hardware things happened this year? Oh, yeah. Plenty. Like, like what? Oh, there's... So many new processors came out from uh, Qualcomm. Did yeah, Qualcomm, Qualcomm release a new processor? It's new Snapdragons. No, no new Snapdragons are super fast. There's not a single new Qualcomm processor that means anything. Wait, this whole year and nothing came out? No, 2014 was a wasted year for processors in smartphones. I hear ruffling. That's me. I know. Oh. <laughs> well, go on. Well, I mean, what what else can you say? You can't ridicule Qualcomm too much. I mean, they'll get tired of it eventually. <laughs> Uh, not really. Oh. I mean, I know I know this one guy. He complains about it all the time. Like in, he, used to, in he, F- he, used to, he used to love this company's products, but now he absolutely hates them. So you're telling me that in every blog post this one person writes, he'll make a jib at the Qualcomm. Yes. Yeah, pretty 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 close to being correct. Um, but yet, but yet, no other company really makes the processors for the gadgets he likes. No. So, so in um a week, you might have heard that CES is going to be happening, and one of the things Qualcomm has been teasing is a joint project with LG, the LG Flex Two. You know, the one that can bend, the G Flex. Well, apparently, it's going to be running a year and a half old processor. It's going to be running a Snapdragon 800, and that's just appalling to me. It just does not make any sense. Well, I've used the same CPU on my desktop for, what, going on four years now? Desktop CPUs, I think, are a little bit better than mobile CPUs, but it's not really even the CPU that's the problem. It's all the other things that are bundled with it. Yeah. Um, you know, there there were some new phones this year. You know, you had all the new uh, S5s and M8s with uh, new cameras, you know, two cameras with ultra pixels. You and, had the, uh, and other phones ending with S. You know, we had a lot of phones with S, like the... Well, there was no technically 6S phone. I don't know why I wrote that, but I wrote it. didn't happen yet. It will happen. Uh, we had the new Z3, compact and regular. Those were rated the best phones of the year. AT&T hasn't picked them up yet. Of course not, but you could just buy it off contract. Could. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the Nexus 6, which we were all looking forward to, but then suddenly stopped looking forward to when, you know, everybody re- found out that it was going to be huge. Literally gigantic. So, and uh, other uh, smaller computers happened, like the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I believe they released the model A plus and B plus this year. What creative so, names. Yes. So I believe that one of us got one of those. Yes, I did get the B plus. Supposedly it uses less power, even though I didn't measure that. It does have an extra USB port. And the nicest feature was the micro SD card, which I think was an obvious improvement because the Old ones had the SD card just hanging out over the end of the board, which wasn't a very good design. So, and uh, another uh, gadget that got released was the Pono Player, uh, which is uh, uh, that one guy, uh, Neil Young, his uh, Kickstarter. Apparently, he's just an old man that hates MP3s and compressed music and how, you know, ostensibly how technology has gotten better over the past 15 years. We're still listening to the same garbage quality sound. So he decided to do something about it. He made a rant at South by Southwest and uh, made a Kickstarter, and uh, I participated in it to the tune of like $300 and got a uh, really nice, uh, well, not MP3, but rather portable music player. Uh, you can figure, you can uh, listen to all that and more on 
uh, I believe it was my last control structure episode, number 76, I believe. Yep, that sounds right. So I believe that you were starring on that, Ryan, also. I, I was. I was there. I heard it. It happened. But yes. I will mention those buttons still confuse me. Yes. Yeah, that the pause button should not be in the middle. Well, it's the on-off as well, so yeah. Mm-hmm. I deal with it okay. So let's talk about some software releases. Did, did anything actually get released this year? Uh, Windows 9 didn't come out this year, so no. No, it didn't. Oh. <laughs> so uh, plenty of games got released, and because uh, no one from the uh, 8-bit is here, I guess it falls to me again. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so Broken Age Act 1 uh, got released. That is the, uh, how should I say, the Kickstarter that put Kickstarter on the map. Uh, that's... Uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, Tom uh, Tim Schafer's uh, game uh, that he uh, made when he got like what three or four million dollars on Kickstarter. Uh, it's a point-and-click adventure game, and uh, you know it's kind of like uh, all the ones from about 25 years ago. Uh, you know, it's an adventure game. It's you know uh, how should I say very unlike most games these days. Uh, so I found that it was uh, quite easy to play, very entertaining. And uh, it's only half of the story. Uh, so, yeah, I'll be looking forward to that in the coming year. Mm-hmm. Um, so did you find, I was going to say, did you find much that was different in that versus the old-time uh, adventure games? Or like... uh, well, well, the first thing I noticed is that the resolution was much better uh, in Broken Age. Uh, the, uh, the animations were much better. Uh, and, you know... How should I say the art style? Uh, you know, it's you know all hand painted. It looks gorgeous. You know, it's you know just like you know regular painting on the wall. Uh, then again, it is sort of like a sort of a fantasy setting for half of it. Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, otherwise, you know, uh, how should I say? It? It's also a little bit different in the fact that you are playing two sides to a story. So you're switching back and forth between like a fantasy village that's getting terrorized by a monster. And a little boy that has grown up all alone on a spaceship. So is this two this separate stories or seemingly sh- so that you switch back and forth between? Yes. Uh, so yeah, it's a little bit interesting design there, and it'll be interesting if these ever you know join together at some point. Um, another uh, Kickstarter or at least crowdfunding thing that blew up uh, is a Star Citizen. And I believe now it's over $65 million. It's been going for over two years, I think. And uh, this year, I believe it was about June or so, they released their first full module called Arena Commander. Uh, This is, uh, uh, well, at least least the beta released in June. I believe they released the full version of it, I think, just this past month or so. It's essentially a dogfighting simulator where you get into a little spaceship fighter and go out and shoot other little spaceship fighters. It's pretty cool. I thought you meant and, literal dogs. Mm, not space dogs, okay, no. Okay, just making sure. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the rest of this. Uh, so a, uh, a game, game company by the name of Blizzard Entertainment... Uh, you may have heard of them. They're sort of like the uh, the Apple of uh, video game developers. I would not call them the Apple of video game developers in any direction for any reason ever. Why? Uh, yeah. No. Everything everything they ever released is like critically acclaimed, and Fast everyone selling. buys millions of copies. Yeah, but nobody likes them. More rollouts in more countries. Yeah, but nobody likes them. They made World of Warcraft. Yeah, and everybody hates them. Except for... There are more Apple computers than Minecraft players. Wait a second. Yeah. I you, did that wrong. You got, you got your yeah. developers okay, crossed. Okay, okay, yeah. My, my developers are crossed. Continue. Uh, so uh, Blizzard uh, has been working on a successor MMO to uh, World of Warcraft, and they decided that they really didn't like it, so they totally canceled it after like working on it for 10 years. Well, that sucks. And instead, they made a sort of Team Fortress 2 clone uh, called Overwatch. Uh, and they uh, presented that at, I think it was BlizzCon, uh, er, uh, maybe not too long ago, like maybe three months ago. Um, and they also released a game called Hearthstone, uh, which a lot of people have gone crazy about. Um, so yeah, they're uh, doing some pretty interesting things there. 
And uh, it's not just me, but uh, also the uh, Ians on the uh, 8-bits uh, joined in to play some more Borderlands 2. Which they've been trying to play for, like, every day since their first show. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I remember being on their show, like, what is it, like their second episode or something? Mm, yeah, like, at least in the first ten, yeah. Yeah, so they've been uh, trying to play this for, like, what, over two almost years. two and a half years? Yep. Uh, and it's a great game, and uh, I even, uh, in my re- review I posted, uh, I said that, you know, it's damn near the best game I have ever played. That's pretty good. Uh, not that I've actually sat down and thought about the best games ever, uh, but yeah, pretty fun. And uh, also very pretty, like visually. I might have purchased it too. Uh, it it could have come with a graphics card I bought, but it it didn't, and I was sad. Games, you know, I don't play games, so it's okay. But the well, games that I do play, like Transistor, well, you know, that was a good game. I think it came out in uh summer sometime, maybe May. I think so, yeah. And uh, you know, everybody was uh, raging about all of the rage and uh, how great it was, and then I played it. It was really short. The story was kind of eh, and uh, the gameplay was a lot of fun, but. Just the hype did not match what was delivered, I might say. Yeah, games. I don't play games. I don't know what to tell you. Too bad. Yeah. Go back into your ecosystem. I'm going to go back into my ecosystem because it's safe there. So, uh, along with game releases, there are also some games that released that utterly failed, uh, such as Dungeon Keeper. Uh, I myself have not played any of uh, the Dungeon Keeper games, uh, but EA apparently released a mobile edition or something, and it turns out that it was just a big cash grab. Uh, so, like, apparently it's just, like, one of these games where you have to wait, like, a really long time in order to do anything. Uh, but if you want to get everything done in, like, a minute, you can pay money. Uh, so uh, this, you know, was apparent apparent to pretty much everyone, uh, and re- it was not reviewed uh, exactly well, and uh, like perhaps the most insulting thing of it was is that I'm not sure if you like left the game or something that it would ask you a question. You know, what would you rate this game? And there were two buttons: one to four stars, and another button five stars. Mm-hmm. And if you click the one to four, uh, you were directed to like some sort of form where you were asked, you know, like why did you rate this game so low? Yep. Whereas if you clicked five stars, it would bring you to, like, the Google Play review page or something. Mm -hmm. I remember hearing about that. Yeah. And then there was a more recent fail uh, called Assassin's Creed Unity. Uh, This was uh, pretty much a failure even before it came out. Uh, So in case if you didn't, uh, uh, how should I say, uh, keep up on the next-gen platforms, it seems like a lot of games on the PlayStation 4 uh, you know, play at 1080p with 60 frames per second. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas the Xbox One uh, can play games at 1080p but at 30 frames per second, or 720p at 60 frames. Yep. Uh, so to eliminate all of the uh, arguments, uh, Ubisoft apparently uh, decided to cap it at 30 frames per second, and I think at 720p also. Uh, I'm not sure if this was also on the PC version. I'm, I'm almost want to say yes, uh, but like a lot of uh, people got angry over this. Like, why are you capping it to the lowest common denom- denominator with this? Mm-hmm. And uh, like the director or something. Of course, I imagine that he's French because Ubisoft is essentially a French company. You know, he's like, oh, like this is our artistic expression. And, like, 30 frames per second makes it more cinematic or something. Sure it does. Uh, So then when it came out, uh, the game was utterly broken and hideous. Uh, Like, there's several screenshots floating around of characters not even, like, they're missing their face. Like, they have their (laughs) eyeballs and their mouth and their hair, but no face. They look really, really disturbing. And, uh, like, they had to rush out, like, all these patches and stuff. Uh, they also had a season pass, which, you know, apparently is like a free order for DLC that doesn't exist yet. Uh, they apparently, you know, said, we're sorry for all this. They stopped selling their season pass or like their gold edition or whatever and offered 
uh, people who had bought those, like, two free games or something. So, yeah, this ended, like, really bad, and I'm not sure if it's still all patched up yet. So, yeah, this is uh, really bad, guys. You know, I, I know some other games that were supposed to be the greatest thing since uh, sliced bread, but uh, didn't end up that way. You know, um, you know, Destiny was supposed to be the next generation Halo. Uh, you know, Bungie made it. It was supposed to be great. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be the 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 next. Oh yeah, step that's in a... that's the other game fail. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> because uh, nobody likes it. Apparently, it just didn't work out. You probably know more about it than I do. I just I've just heard that you know it's not not the best. Uh, well, I heard that when it came out, you know, because it's always online stuff that, you know, they had the, uh, blues where, you know, everyone got on and the servers essentially got dosed by everyone trying to play it at once. And then there was the, uh, famous loot cave, I hear, where apparently, like, people could, like, sit up on a rock, like, out, you know, sort of, like, out of range, but Mm -hmm. you could still see them. And then, like, every five minutes, like, you know, some mob would come out and they would just, like, snipe everyone. They would rush in, collect everything, go back outside and wait another five minutes. I mean, and I they uh, they patched that out after about, oh, maybe two weeks. I just feel like it's really interesting about how, how uh, hyped it was and then how little fanfare was meant with it right afterwards. Uh, I, I've heard that the subscriber counts have been dropping. I mean, it's not really subscription-based per se. You know, just, just active players. And they, they re- recently uh, released a new kind of expansion kind of thing. And the other game, Phil, I, I remember from this year was Wildstar. It was also, you know, touted as being the next generation MMO. And then, you know, it, it, it peaked really early on, you know, within the first month. And it has been struggling since. And originally they had committed to doing holiday parties and, uh, you know, DLC sort of like expansions frequently. And then they had to basically roll back on all of those promises because they just didn't have the, the income that they had rejected that they would. Fun stuff. It's been a hard year for MMOs. So uh, let's uh, step away from games into actual software. If you think iOS 8 is actual software, let's ask Matt what he thinks about it. Yes. So I totally installed it immediately as soon as it came out. Yeah, and how was it? Well, I didn't because I believe that updating your device uh, ruins it. Uh, I thought you were going to say it takes bandwidth. And that. That yeah. also does Well, it. I think you did update to iOS 7 finally, though. Yes, yes, I uh, made the uh, mistake of bringing it down here one day. (laughs) Um, Uh It seems that whenever any of my devices left here unattended, um, new software, new apps and other things are added immediately, and uh, the device goes under several updates. What's that uh, Twitter app doing on your phone? Actually, it does nothing but ruin my life. You see... (laughs) Now it wants, it keeps on asking me questions about this, like, do you want to complete this action with this? Do you want to do that? And I haven't even logged in yet, so I can't tweet it and use it, because, like, who would use Twitter? Everyone. Well, it's one of them, if you don't know, it's one of those social media things that uh, are surveillance, and you, you have to talk to people, and it's it's just terrible. Okay. Well, uh, iOS 8. So I have 8. none of the features. I don't know a thing about it. iOS 8, yeah. I don't know too much about it either. Uh, apparently, it, it fixed a lot of the problems that were uh, apparent in iOS 7, a lot of the animation speeds and just user, you know, user uh, experience, usability, buttons, outlines. I don't know anything about it. I don't have one. You, you should you should be uh, into this this iOS stuff. You have an iPad. Yes, that has Safari, and that's the only redeemable quality of it. If you think Safari is redeemable, you're doing it wrong. Well, I also have the Coast, but it did do the same thing. Oh, like the Opera, Opera Coast. The Opera Coast. Isn't thing. that funny? Like it, it, it's Safari just runs better on yeah, the iPad. Yeah, well, of course. Like, I mean, it's native. Yeah. Well, one of the things actually that iOS did, or iOS 8 did, is they actually allowed third-party, um, you know, web views to actually use the real JavaScript and rendering engine instead of the cheap one. So that that's kind of good. So that means mm. your Coast browser should be somewhat decent. Well, the one I can talk about is Android 5. Did, did you get that update? Lollipop? Yeah. The newest Android? Yes, I did, actually. And how's that been for you? Well, it's really nice to get to the flashlight. Yeah, so the, the best feature, highlight feature of 2014, Android now has a native, always nearby flashlight button. You heard it here. That's what Matt says. Now, I... Wow, that's, a, that's actually a security feature. Yeah, it kind of is, so that you can see who's mugging you in the dark. 
<laughs> um, among uh, among security. other security features. Sure. Well, I, I I'm I'm going to come at it from a different angle though. Uh, during this semester that has just completed, I was actually developing an Android app for the first time, and um, you know, I've never really developed an app before on a mobile device, so it, it it's different than building a web app, which is what I'm normally used to. And let me tell you, this Android thing is pretty awful. Uh, Material Design, which was going to be the new design language for Android 5, it's barely implemented in the libraries that Google gives you. So you are basically left out in the cold and to fend for yourself in either using somebody else's third-party version or making it yourself entirely. And I feel like that's pretty close to being awful. Terrifically awful. Yeah, pretty much. So what do you know about uh, Windows? Uh, a little bit. I know a little bit about Windows. I seem to be using it right now. Uh, I think I am too. Are, are you using it, Matt? Yes. Windows. I, I like Windows. Do you know what version of Windows? Uh, this is uh, 8.1. Yes, 8.1. And I've also tried 10. Oh, oh 10. Well, no, wait. No, no, what? No, 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 no. Off by one. You know, yeah. I've been doing that all day. Yeah, this off by one error has been happening all day. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, like the, you know, most horrible off by one error that uh, Windows 8 had is that it had no start menu. Yeah, it was it, it had zero start menus. So it was totally off by one. But uh, now uh, we have this wonderful thing called a start menu in uh, Windows 8.1. That's not really a I, menu. It's a button. A button. It's a start button. Wow. It, it doesn't even. It, it's not even a menu. It takes you to the start screen still. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I think I think we might need to work on that. I mean, I've or it might have been like something that they were dreaming up. I'm not sure what it was, but it looks like it might actually increase productivity with desktop applications. Well, that's insane. What is that? I'm not sure. Yeah. I think we'll have to wait a little bit and find out. Yeah, probably. At least until June. Uh, what what do you know about this thing called Xanadu? Oh, Xanadu. That's something that like I don't know if my grandfather cared about it. He might have actually heard about it. Uh, it's this one thing that's sort of, uh, how should I say, it was an idea that was like the web, but happened 50 years ago. And it just came out this year. And, you know, what it is is, is essentially like a, how should I say, double link between documents. Yeah. So, uh, and like, it's a little bit more, how should I say, not anonymous than the web. It's not as it's it's extremely text based and extremely nonlinear like I guess. Yes, it's sort of hard to describe, and like even now I sort of don't get it. Yeah. But it's like the m- most vaporist vaporware ever. Vaporist. Uh, so yeah, that's uh you know something that came out, and uh, you know vaporware might not be vaporware forever. But it might be in this case. So, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the people behind it realized that the web sort of came along and ate their lunch about 20 years ago, uh, but they realized that, hey, they can still do something with PDFs. So, yeah. Nobody likes PDFs. Just uh, I find them very convenient for paper replacement. Yeah, but they're so uneditable. I generally don't edit paper documents either. Well, okay, I guess that's fair. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, let's go on to some big headlines. Huge headlines. Yeah, like, really huge. Uh, so, for instance, uh, all those, all that mobile stuff you just mentioned, that, uh, uh, Android lollipop and that iOS thing. Yep. Apparently, encryption is enabled by default. Uh, like, encrypted storage is enabled by default. That is on true. These, on these, uh, new mobile systems. Sort of. And, and, you know, that's great. Except if you talk to the FBI, they're, you know, pretending that the sky is falling and that, uh, you know, like, rapists will, like, rule an anarchy You've or something in the streets. you got to think about the children. Oh, not just the children. There's more than the children? Apparently. Uh, but, uh, you know, like, all this is actually overblown. Uh, but, uh, you know, there, this is a boon for, uh, you know, like, security in general. Uh, but, you know, while we are, we, uh, have encrypted phones, we no longer have encrypted drives because TrueCrypt disappeared this year. And I think this is a, a huge tragedy. Yes. And, uh, it looked like someone had forked that, but I really haven't heard any noise about it. No. Uh, 
So, yeah, it seemed like TrueCrypt was going through some kind of security audit, uh, but they apparently were, like, in between, uh, uh, like, two rounds or something. And they're like, okay, uh, we're going to declare this all insecure and goodbye. Yeah, it, it really disappeared one day. Everybody thought they were just hacked, and then it uh, disappeared permanently. Yeah, and as if that's not bad enough, uh, like all of the SSL and TLS stacks and libraries that uh, everyone uses to communicate over the Internet, suddenly all of them are vulnerable, like ev- uh, all of them everywhere. Uh, all your security are vulnerable, you know, this year. Uh, not, and, and actually not just, uh, like the, uh, security stacks. Also, your, uh, shell is also vulnerable. Uh, we had a shell shock, uh, this year. A horrible, uh, bug in the bash scripting language that, uh, you know, involved executing functions from variables. Uh, it's apparently hung around for about 20 years or something. Yep. So, yeah, uh, if there's, like, any embedded systems, if there's any forgotten servers, yeah, they're all still vulnerable to this. And, and one of the attack vectors is simply just having an Apache server. Uh, you can craft a uh, malicious request with these variable bash commands, and uh, it can potentially exploit it. It's, it's simply amazing. Uh, I have actually looked at the logs on my server, and someone has tried to attack me this way. Yep. But I do not use Apache, so Very good wise. for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, Java does have some security advantages. Yeah, one or two. Who knew? Yeah, nobody. So, uh, yeah, back to these uh, like security stack vulnerabilities. Uh, Apple had a go-to-fail uh, vulnerability in which, uh, you know, like, if it... Uh, like I'm not exactly sure how, but uh, like even if a uh, security certificate was uh, like invalid, it would still accept it. Yep, I remember this fail. Yeah, something like that, uh, where it would always, you know, say, "Okay, yeah, this is good." This is um, why you don't code in Objective C. This is what happens. <laughs> yeah, uh, better get on that Swift. Yep. Uh, and then there was Heartbleed. Uh, which is a vulnerability in the OpenSSL library, uh, a library that, although widely used, had not received much attention up until then. So, uh, like, if you all of a sudden notice that every single website in the world wanted you to change your password, Heartbleed is probably why. Yep. Um, that uh, happened, I believe, uh, I think it was in spring? Yeah, I like April or so, maybe. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they, the marketing, if you can call it on this, was pretty good. They, uh, you know, they had a very scary name for it. They made a very frightening looking icon with, you know, it's like a heart shape and like red, sh- you know, lines, you know, going underneath of it. And, uh, you know, you know, they projected this in a way that was responsible. They, you know, went around to the vendors, uh, of like very important things and said, hey, we found this vulnerability, we haven't published it yet, but in a month we're going to, please fix your stuff. Yeah, fast. Uh, so, you know, uh, within, like, two days of this hitting, there was already a patch for OpenSSL, and, uh, you know, hopefully everyone's applied it. But, you know, there's, you know, neglected servers everywhere, uh, so I'm pretty sure this uh, will be a cockroach that will be with us for decades. Probably. Um, and then there was an S channel vulnerability. Uh, this is, uh, Windows, uh, TLS stack and library. Uh, so Windows itself is, uh, kind of vulnerable, uh, to an attack. Uh, then, uh, I believe a few other, uh, libraries, uh, got vulnerabilities that were detected this year. So, yeah, uh, good luck and, uh, hi, NSA. Yeah, I hope you're listening. Uh, so you're pretty much not safe whatever you use. Well, yeah. That's why Matt doesn't use Twitter. Use the mail. Oh, right, because the NSA <laughs> won't read the mail. They won't. I won't let them. Sure. I'll drive too quickly. Yeah, but they already touched it. Drive too quickly. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Uh, what about but... those missing packages? They're gone for a reason. Wait, what? The missing packages. Oh, postal inspectors. They're different than the NSA. Sure they are. Uh, yeah, they'll just shoot your packages. Why else would they have so many guns? I don't know. 
Uh, but uh, some good news uh, happened in that Microsoft finally stopped supporting Windows XP for good. Oh, it only took forever. Yeah, I mean, what was it, only around for, like, what, 13 years? Or so. So, uh, yeah, that was about half of my life. Uh, but, uh, you know, XP, you know, it's it had a good run. They still sell know. support. Just saying. Yeah. Just only saying. If you have, only if you have, like, a billion dollars or something. Yeah, uh, but... The point is, they still sell support for their dead product. So, yeah. is, is it is it dead? No. Well, it is dead because you need to have a certain number of computers to order support for, and every each, year goes up. It, yeah. it doubles yeah. or so. But every uh, year. no, they still sell support. It's still alive. People still use it. Well, I mean, what other choice do they have? Are they going to use Windows eight? <laughs> they could. Well, are they going to use Windows nine? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think they're going to use Windows nine. Didn't no. they break it the second release? What the the nine preview? No, no, that was actually um. Uh, we'll Something. talk about it. We'll, we'll talk, talk about, about it later. later. I, I have a story for that. Oh, I don't read the docs. No, sorry. you don't. Well, what, what about what happened with net neutrality this year? It seems to be a big issue. Yeah, net neutrality took a big hit this year. I believe it was in January that uh, when uh, Verizon sued the FCC over their probably admittedly weak uh, net neutrality guidelines and won. Uh, you know, Verizon's like, hey, why are you trying to regulate us like a common carrier? According to you, we are not common carriers. So, yeah, this is unjust, and we would like to be released from these unconstitutional duties, and they won. Uh, but the judge said that, uh, you know, if to the FCC that if you actually declared these guys common carriers, we wouldn't have this problem. Exactly. Uh, but, uh... So, you know, the FCC is, you know, trying to reconsider all of this, and I've heard that all the other big telecoms are kind of mad at Verizon for doing this, uh, in that, uh, you know, they successfully destroyed the weak protection that was there, and the FCC is thinking about coming out with a bigger gun to protect itself. So, yeah, uh, big telecoms sort of hate Verizon now. Well, and of course, you also have all of the... um other troubles that the uh, users of the internet have been going through, such as Comcast, uh, they've been uh, trying to pretty much just screw over anyone they can. Yeah. Um, so, especially, uh, how should I say this? The It's fairly common knowledge that uh, Netflix takes up a lot of bandwidth. Yeah, like more than 50%, not maybe uh, 35 well, Maybe not quite half, but uh, how should I say it's the vast majority of traffic at prime tr- time, yeah. or, or at least the uh, the largest share yeah. uh, to any one particular company. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, ISPs, you know, sort of like eyeball this, and they're like, "Hey, we could get money off of this." So what they do is they intentionally let uh, their own peering points to other networks saturate, so that you know, say the link from Comcast or Verizon to, like, some other carrier that actually moves data around the world, uh, they let those points get a little saturated. So they intentionally degrade everyone's service in hopes of uh, getting direct payment from some of these uh, services uh, so they can boost their bottom line. Uh, fact, gotta, get the, gotta, get the, gotta get that profit, yo. You know, in effect, having to pay twice for the same data. Now, Matt has a great metaphor for that because he works at the post office. Do you, do you remember that metaphor you made? So, like, uh, if I send a letter, I would have to pay for the stamp and then pay, uh, and the other person would have to pay to get it, right? Something like that? Yeah. 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 Isn't that great? What but if... the, the carrier would keep the, the money. Right, of the, course. The second fee. No. Oh, well, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's how I wanted it. Right, of course you do. Mm-hmm. So, in effect, the ISPs are using their monopoly, uh, how should I say, over the connectivity to their end users as a leverage to get more money from, uh, you know, like other service providers. You know, it's sort of like going back to the old telephone model that, uh, you know, you pay, you know, sort of long distance uh, fees to get the get your call to whoever, and then you pay again to actually terminate the call to actually get the other person's phone to ring or something. Yeah, this 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 whole problem is just because uh our our people got greedy. Yeah, there there's that, but also the government uh the FCC, they don't they don't really want to do too much work here because the guy who's running it currently is a former lobbyist, I believe, 
for... I was going to say dingo, but Oh, right, yeah. but he, he is a dingo. That is correct. He, he is indeed a dingo. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, go on with the other headlines here. Uh, also, uh, net neutrality for the win. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so something good that happened this year was potato stock. So back in, I believe it was July, uh, this one guy from Columbus, uh, Ohio, which I know very fondly because I grew up like 50 miles from there. Uh, so this guy, he uh, wanted to do something that he had never done before, and that was eat potato salad. So he kickstarted potato salad, and this uh, pretty much uh, snowballed on the internet, and uh, suddenly he got like $55,000 to throw a big party for potato salad. So I went there, I attended, I got the t-shirt, and, uh, you know, stayed around for a couple hours, listened to the concert, uh, had a cup of potato salad. It was pretty good because it was made by a, uh Italian restaurant, I think. Uh, or was it just, like, some Italian food vendor? I'm not sure. So like, street did, vendor? So the guy didn't even end up making his own potato salad? He did make <laughs> his own potato salad. He had help from other people. Well, that's that's good, I guess. And thank of. goodness, because it was so delicious. Well, okay, that's fine, then. So, so the weird thing is, how did he get to be however many years old and had never eaten potato salad before? Well, let's, did he not go to a picnic let, ever? Let's do a science experiment. Matt, have what? you ever had potato salad? I have. I've eaten a potato. There you go. Matt's never had <laughs> potato salad. That's how. <laughs> I've eaten millions of potatoes over my career. But you've never had potato a salad. Being. But what? I'm Googling this. Oh, he doesn't even know what potato salad is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. I've, had, I've eaten salad. Like... That's white. And weird. Uh, <laughs> White and weird. Uh, yeah, I, it looks like a potato in a. Oh man, that is like so white. Like no, it's all weird and. That is so creamy. not gangster. No, no, look how creamy it is. I don't know. Uh, I like potato, like baked potatoes or or fried. My my preferred, you know. Cut them up in oh, wedges and fr- see, deep fry them. See that—that that is how a person goes for twenty-two years without having potato. You eat more pop tarts than you have been alive. Yes, because pop tarts are disgusting. Well, every, you have one every single day. Since and then I was you like crunch four. them up and put them in your pocket, and then don't eat them, and then throw them on the ground for the birds, and then the snow melts, and then we're all happy. And the squirrels—they like them too. Mm-hmm. See, I'm, and then you a, catch they're... them and trap them and torture them. And that was the best impromptu long. proof ever. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> and thus, I share a little bit of the food show with you. Uh, thank you for the food show. Well, let's talk about some upcoming things. Yeah, like uh, Windows 9. Windows 9? What happened to Windows 9? Where'd you put it? Everywhere. Uh, no, I don't I don't think you did. I think you're off by one again. It's actually Windows 10. <gasps> No. Yeah. Uh, when they skipped Windows 9. Cause, did you know that adding a menu and a button is worth 1.9 version updates? <laughs> yes, yes, I did know that. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh, you know, Microsoft is, uh, having an event in January to discuss the consumer features of Windows 10. We don't really know what those are yet, but what they showed so far at their business enterprise demo was some multi-desktops, a new start menu that appears when you click the existing 8.1 start button, and uh, that's pretty much it for the headlines of that. Uh, They also uh, leaked a new browser. They have done that. What is it about? Tell me. Uh, It's They've apparently realized that uh, people associate the words Internet Explorer to bulk baggage. Bulk baggage. Yeah. Baggage. Yeah, same thing. Uh, so, uh, they have apparently scrapped a lot of the Internet Explorer stuff, and, uh, they are apparently creating a new browser. Uh, not quite from scratch, though. They're keeping the JavaScript engine and the layout renderer thing, uh, but, uh, they're apparently redoing the rest of it, and they are going to apparently support stench extensions. So, in other words, it's, there's no point. Uh, well, they're essentially, you know, catching up to Firefox circa 10 years ago. Well, they really have to keep those two things. They really have to keep the rendering engine and the JavaScript engine, because if they don't, 
all, many of their businesses that they, you know, work with and even a lot of like consumer apps. Like I know my mom uses this coupon printer thing that only works in Internet Explorer. And if they didn't keep some of those things, too many people would be angry. So, you know, with all of this, you know, like I've sort of, you know, you know, kept a watch on Internet Explorer. You know, like the latest version is not that bad. I've um, tried it still, and it still takes a good few seconds after it's finished visibly loading for me to start typing into the address bar. Hmm. You might want to look into that. Yeah, it's probably just because I hate Windows. Yeah, I can uh, read your mind like that. It it really can. The, they say that the eyes are the windows to the mind. So Another interesting feature about that, uh, the Windows 10 was you mentioned that it had a multiple desktop. Now that reminded me that Linux has had that for quite a few years yeah, since when you ever um, yeah like fire yes since ever so and it's a really uh, great feature man and i actually had, got to try it the windows 10 multi desktops yes and clearly in the version that we tried it was only partially baked because you couldn't move you couldn't move them around it was you there were no apparent shortcuts like on the keyboard to switch things you couldn't send windows from one to the other by shortcut right. there were some very harsh limitations and they will all be corrected before launch. Maybe. Now, also, before we move on, when do we think launch is? Before the school year. Oh, so before when? September. Before September, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I originally... Uh, April. It's going to be April. I originally thought June because they're they're having build. They're probably going to show off a working copy at build in May and then launch in June. But now I don't, I don't think that's true because the rumor is that it'll be late summer, which means oh, it doesn't matter anymore, Microsoft, whatever. So uh, let's uh, look forward to some more things, uh, like more Star Citizen. Uh, they will be releasing the Squadron 42 episode starting sometime this year. And you're like, hey, I thought we we're supposed to be talking about Star Citizen here. Well, apparently their single-player uh, campaign, or whatchamacallit, is called Squadron 42. Uh, so that should be uh, quite fun and uh, suspenseful since they're doing it in episode, in episode form. And uh, later on, there will be uh, Arena Commander 2.0, uh, which will allow you to get into a big starship with a whole bunch of your friends uh, and command other little fighters out there in space. So uh, that mm, I'm not particularly looking forward to that, but a lot of people are. So, yeah. Uh, Broken Age Act 2 should be coming up sometime this year also. Uh I believe I heard back in October they actually finalized the writing for it. Uh, so uh, then also uh, a processor. You know, you know, you know what a processor is. It's the core of a phone. It's it's what makes a phone better than the last one. Apparently, there's up to four cores in phone now, in phones now. Yeah. Well. Uh... That's Are there still going to be four cores? Well, there might actually be more than that. Uh, in fact, if Qualcomm ever decides to actually make a new product, which is, uh, you know, not going to happen anytime soon, you know, there might actually be eight. There, <gasps> there, there could be, uh, four powerful ones, which I think is an A53, and then the other one, which is a different number, there would be four lesser powerful ones. So there will be Wait, a total so of eight. So they're mixing it on the same chip. Yeah. Two different types. And and so the reason they're doing that is the way they figure it is the lowly clocked ones, the, the less powerful four set, those will be used when the phone's not displaying anything, when the phone's off somewhat idle, but still, you know, checking for updates, Twitter messages, email, whatever. Uh, and then the real ones will be used when you're actively using the phone, playing a game or actually displaying information that needs to be shown. And that's a great idea, and uh, can't wait to see it. But uh, what a shame that Qualcomm not only didn't release this product in 2014, but isn't even using their actual proprietary in-house architecture, the crate architecture, for any of it. It's all off-the-shelf ARM designs. So, oh, Qualcomm. Uh, another processor I'm sort of looking forward to is the Intel whatever Wells. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, Haswell, Broadwell, Broadwell. Bridgewell, no, I don't no, it's, care it's, anymore. No, you do care. It's Brad, Broadwell and Broadwell, just Broadwell. Okay, Broadwell. Um, I'm waiting for the actual real laptop uh, additions to come out. I hope you like waiting, because uh, who knows when that's going to happen. Uh, well, they've released the really ultra-portable tablet uh, versions of these, 
So uh, you know the you know therefore the scaled up versions shouldn't be that much longer. You know, hey, we might we might see those at CES. You know, that would actually be a great time to actually start releasing those. That makes a lot of sense. But isn't it because... also shocking that they intend to release Skylake the same year too? Mm, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. Yeah, isn't that absurd? I don't know what they're thinking. So, which interesting uh, saying CES since my current Sandy Well processor. Uh, was also sort of announced at a CES or released uh, about four years ago. Uh, but then when I did uh, come to find out about a month later that all of the SATA ports were bad. Oops. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that won't happen again. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it will be avoided this time. So, uh, yeah, anything else uh, people are looking forward to? Uh, oh, yeah. A- AMD apparently makes products. Tell me more. Uh, everybody... Come the end of 2015, we'll have AMD products. Everyone, they're just going to throw away all their Intel products because there's, there's going to be huge, significant leaps in performance and energy efficiency. I would like to um, say that's unlikely. Uh, y- y- this, this... Yeah, I would love for that to happen. AMD says it's happening. Look, it comes from their very own website. Their very own marketing team. <laughs> their very own marketing team. Okay, so so this team. this this says... they enable today and inspire tomorrow. So this says 2015, but we know that 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 AMD somewhat uh, overinflates their marketing numbers. So two billion transistors, nah, maybe five hundred thousand. No. So that just means by 2016, there'll be significant leaps. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know about that. And did you also know that 2015 is going to be the year of the BlackBerry again? You know, I don't. BlackBerry. I, BlackBerry. 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 Okay, well, we did a good job there. <laughs> so, do you do you know what phones came out this year from the BlackBerry? It was the uh, QAR tens. Yeah, but the Passport was the one I was. Oh, oh, the Passport. The one that everybody loved and ordered in bulk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they made the classic now. It's the rectangular version of the Passport. Exciting! Isn't what it? other shapes can they make for 2015? They've been experimenting with triangle screens. Now, do you, do you think anybody's gonna buy that? Yeah. So, so the 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 base of the triangle is where your thumbs go, and then the tip is where you hit someone with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's piercing damage. It's, it's I've like... I've been experimenting with uh, triangle-shaped uh, media players. Yes, that is somewhat true. It's more of a 3D shape, though. Is aren't all shapes 3D? Not always. BlackBerry can figure it out. Trust me. They have the patents for it. They they might, unless they sold them to themselves. Mm-hmm. A lot of things to look forward to. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, the problem with tech news lately is that nothing's happened. You can't agree or disagree, can you? Yeah, strange things like that happen when you're not doing a podcast. Well, yeah, you know, it's just. I mean, everything's you know, at, at its best. I mean, Open Office is at a stable version. Um, everything is. Open no. Office? Ew. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you use the Apache? Office. Oh, yeah, no. No, see, nobody should even be using those things because those are awful. I mean, if you ever wanted to use real for- formatting, I mean, just just don't even try. No. What do you, so what do you suggest? Word for iPad? Uh, if that's available to you, then absolutely. Uh, otherwise, I would highly suggest just using Notepad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, in the uh, spirit of uh, people going to Europe over the past year, it looks like I might also be going to Europe also. That's good. Is it? So... So in, I think, August, uh, apparently my pastor's best friend is a missionary to Ireland and has been there for like 20 years, and he's thinking about uh, taking a mission trip over there. That's kind of cool. So, so I got my passport uh, in this past month, so I might actually be going over there. Cool. To Ireland? Yes. Now, is that a real place? Do they have internet? As I hear, it is a real place, and they have good internet. Well, so there you go. You're set. I hear there is a uh, pretty good uh, tech industry over there. I personally and, don't know. And they all also have a lot of money over there. That so. is a useful thing to have. Wait, but how much of it do you get? Uh, probably not much. A few dollars uh, here and there. <laughs> well, don't worry. If you turn all your money into bitcoins now, they'll be worth a lot more by then. Oh, uh, so but by a lot you mean none. No, no, no. Bitcoins are still a thriving market. Just I don't know. Just because the Mt. Gox or whatever shut down doesn't mean there's not other traders. Like, like literally every week, some Bitcoin repo crashes and dies. You should buy now while it's still high. And then cry later when you have nothing left. 
Yeah. So what are, what are your plans for the uh, new year? Oh, the new year? Mm-hmm. Uh, never gotten that far. Well, I, I'm sure you're you're pizzaing it up. I can guarantee that. I can also guarantee that no matter what else happens, they'll remember me. They will remember the you. Years. They they welcome you openly every time you come in. Mm-hmm. I I'm gonna get I don't know like double cancer dominosing. I don't know. Like I'm the only one who's there every other night. <laughs> I don't see any other customer that often. That you don't want to see any other customer that often. Like I gotta probably lay off that. Uh maybe. It's too good though. Well, it's uh been been a good year. Yeah, and you graduate this year. Allegedly, or 2000, I do. Mm-hmm. it is fifteen. Yeah. Yes, I think. Wait, is it this year? Yes, next year. Well, two thousand fifteen. Technically, it's this year still. Well, I mean, did we record this show before, after, or during New Year's minute? Depends on when you finish editing. Exactly. The penultimate day of the year. Right. You you can't can't handle penultimate. No, right? no, 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 I cannot. What does it mean? No, what is potato salad? Should we go back over that? Uh, I <laughs> yeah, I've eaten potatoes and I've eaten salad. I mean, do you just put potato chunks in with the salad? It's a little it's, bit different, but explain it to me. We have nothing else different. going on. We will explain it later. Uh, where can we find everyone on the internet? You can find me at theandrewbailey dot com. I will try to post monthly at least. I uh, oh, that sounds good. With your insane CSS files, that's, that's, <laughs> we all look forward to that. Uh, how, how about how about you? Um, you can send me a letter at eight four nine Tatum Street, St. Paul, Minnesota five five one zero four. And remember, forty nine cents gets you a forever stamp, which is good for forever, and it is the same flat rate for if you send it anywhere in the United States. And you don't have to pay twice. And you don't have to pay twice, and it is secure. Because if you had to pay twice, that would be wrong. Yeah. And I and, guarantee you... And insecure. Yeah. That too. And if you send me a letter with 400 words or less, I will read it. 400 words or more, I'll add it to the queue. Well, what's the queue? Yeah, I got a stack of words. Like, I, So this guy sent me my Roth IRA stuff. <laughs> Man, I opened it up. Just the pages and pages of crap. I don't I don't read long things. And so where can we find you, Stephen, on the internet? Oh, two places. One is proveitwithaunittest.wordpress.com with a grand total of four posts. Another place is huntingpa.info where I have all my hunting stuff, which has a lot more posts on it. That sounds good. Matt will read the hunting one. Yeah, I never... What? Yeah. Post a link. Yeah, you should post a link to that in our uh, show notes. We'll and, he will look at all, and he will look at all of your pretty pictures. Yes, of the squirrels. There's a lot of pretty pictures. <laughs> And of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter, Ryan Mar, And of course, not on Google+, Plus, which is where I have posted pictures of my new cat, which I have sort of maybe kind of named Rust, but also on my blog, which is where I occasionally but somewhat infrequently post news stories ridiculing Qualcomm for failing miserably and other things. Anything else? Not really. Should we w- wish our listeners a Happy New Year? Happy New Year, listeners. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, one one mumble. Okay, that's that's good. Have a good one, everyone. Have a good one. Have Watch your cars. Merry New Year, everyone. Hello. How's it going? I hope you're all doing very well on this fine 2015 edition of the Nexus Special. I am just sitting here with my cat, Rust. She's just walking around my table while I'm recording this extra audio for your listening pleasure. Uh, besides wishing you a Happy New Year, I'd also like to inform you that, well, the fringe for this episode was quite fun. Uh, actually, almost probably more fun than the actual episode itself. So I highly suggest that you listen to the fringe. Uh, the fringe is, uh, probably not quite as long as the show, but very, very fun, uh, full of Matt's 
crazy antics besides potato salad or uh, rather not knowing what potato salad is you get to learn more about the post office and other such fun things so i highly recommend listening to that also look forward to other fun things in 2015 and uh well we'll see you then have a good one